A fifth former sheriff's deputy in Mississippi has been sentenced for his part in torturing two black men last year. 53-year-old Brett McAlpin was sentenced to more than 27 years in federal prison. The final former officer, Joshua Hartfield, who worked for a different police department, is also being sentenced today. Last August, the men admitted to breaking into a home and using stun guns, a sex toy, and other objects to torture the men. So far, a federal judge has given sentences ranging from 17 and a half to 40 years. For more, let's bring in New York Law School professor Kirk Burkhalter. He's also the director of the school's 21st century policing project. Uh, Kirk, all six former deputies were at the scene. They played a part in torturing these two men. Um, I was in the courtroom yesterday, and the, the level of emotion these men still feel and their relatives um, is immeasurable. Why do you see this varying degrees of sentencing when it comes to some getting 17 and a half years and one man getting 40 years? So the, very, the, the sentencing is varied by the degree of culpability, meaning what particular acts that one person uh, committed. So the reason why they're all receiving heavy sentences is because they all worked in, in together uh, in some form of conspiracy. However, who actually pulled the trigger, uh, for instance, uh, of the gun? Who actually used uh, the object for the sexual abuse? And I think that varies in degree. And also, who uh, developed the concept of the cover-up and who was more active in that respect as opposed to who was just present and kind of going along. They're all culpable. However, there are different degrees of culpability based on what they did. And the legal team representing the victims, uh, that being uh, Michael Jenkins and Eddie Parker, they said they described, they had a nickname for, for Christian Deadman, calling him Officer Dead Lee. He also conducted um, the, the sexual assaults. But what does this case show us? How much does it highlight just this larger issue within police departments of turning a blind eye to police brutality. When one of the men was speaking in the courtroom yesterday, he was in tears saying that he hopes the sentence brings some sense of closure for the victims and that he should have stood up and, stood up and he was a coward. But what's the reality? Well, the, the first reality is that in cases like this, you know, this is reminiscent to, for instance, uh, the incident with George Floyd, the, the heinous murder of George Floyd. These actions, these activities were known to the police department. We often see that, you know, these police officers are the group of, uh, when they're acting in a group, they have some type of nickname, such as Goon Squad. Other people within the department uh, knew that this person or persons tend to be heavy handed, tend to abuse their authority, tend to abuse force. So this is nothing new. It's not like uh, uh, in most cases where these police officers wake up in the morning and turn from this law abiding citizen to this outrageously mean person. So that's the first thing that stands out. And then the second, then, of course, that leads to the second point of accountability. What do police departments do when they learn of an individual who operates outside the bounds of law? Do they do nothing or do they take action? When police departments fail to take action, that tends to send a signal to other officers, let me keep my mouth shut, let me go along. Clearly, the department has no problem with this type of activity. So it has to start from the top. And then finally, it's absolutely fascinating that six police officers can operate outside the bounds of law, be unaccountable. No one knows where they are. They can commit all these heinous acts without anyone looking for them. So the police department there is broken plain and simple. What advice do you give people? Because people watch this with two sentiments. On one hand, they're relieved to see justice being done. On the other hand, to your point about leadership, Sheriff Brian Bailey is still in his post there in Rankin County. Uh, the, the victims and their legal reps are filing a lawsuit, hundreds of millions of dollars. They want him out of the post. But how, what advice would you give to communities who care about safety? And as you say, leadership starts at the top. So how should they approach the next few months and weeks? Well, it certainly illustrates that uh, we shouldn't have to, we, meaning the public, shouldn't have to wait until there is some heinous act committed uh, in order to take some type of corrective action. Um, the sheriff, I'm certain, has lost confidence of the civilian population there and should be removed, plain and simple. Um, 
As far as uh, recourse, I think some, the only recourse when you have a system that is broken would be to uh, through the federal authorities, the Justice Department and the FBI and so forth, unfortunately. In a larger jurisdiction, I think it's easier to seek some type of recourse through state measures because you have so many different entities and they're staffed by so many different people. But the problem is in a small jurisdiction, prosecutors and the local law enforcement authorities tend to work together. So it's very difficult to seek uh, relief unless one goes to the federal uh, authorities. This is just illustrative, really, of, of how we need some type of national standard, some type of national metric, some way, as you put it, for the civilian population to seek recourse uh, rather than waiting for something like this to happen, to occur. Because yeah. there have been complaints here in this police department uh, between the sheriff's treatment of uh, the African-American community there. And none of this would have come to light if the victims didn't speak out, if Michael Jenkins and Eddie Parker, despite the humiliation and the embarrassment and the pain, you know, if they didn't open up and share what happened, uh, justice would not have been done. Uh, Kirk Burkhalter, thanks for joining us today on this topic. We appreciate it. You're quite welcome.